Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Right, I've got a serious question for you all. Is Tier 10 broken? Now, look, Wargaming recently introduced a new MM, apparently. Way back in update 9.4, this new MM was meant to introduce two separate queues. Okay, that's what it was meant to do. With one queue placing players who show an average or above average or even high level of skill into that one queue and um, the other queue was meant to sh for, for those who had low combat effectiveness or were serial AFK players and the such. Now look, since that update, me personally, I've kind of found that tier X has gone slightly downhill. Let's be honest here, there's always been bad players. There have always been potato players. And there have always been clueless players in tier 10. This is nothing new. But since the introduction of this so-called new MM, it appears to me, at least, that things haven't worked out quite as planned. Now look, I myself have no issues whatsoever with low skilled or low win rate players. Far from it, in fact. Not every player in this game of Blitz is able to obtain a light blue win rate. In fact, the vast majority of the players out there will only ever get a green colored win rate. Stands to reason. I also have no issue with players who play the game purely for fun. I mean, that's what the aim of the game is after all. That's what it's designed to do. It's designed to be entertaining and have some fun. I mean, look, not everybody is seeking some kind of ego-boosting super-duper unicum status, thingy-majiggy. However, when it comes to tier 10, you do kind of expect the players there to have at least some knowledge, basic skills, basic understanding. I mean, weren't they meant to grind their way up to the top? Okay, so that last question was a bit rhetoric and clearly me being sarcastic because gone are the days when you actually had to put in some effort to get those big tanks in tier 10. Now you can just breeze your way to the top regardless if you're a potato and regardless of whether you're spoiling the fun and enjoyment factor of other players. In fact, tier 10 has got so bad recently, gameplay wise, that I've dropped down a few tiers in order to have some kind of enjoyment from the game. Because rolling out in top top tier to an experience E100's camping in spawn is not only frustrating, but bloody annoying to boot. At least in the lower tiers, potato players are to be expected. After all, they are learning those tiers. The tiers are meant to provide them with the skills to progress, although, like I said earlier, well, that premise seems to have been thrown out of the window somewhat. Thing is, playing like a Muppet increases the overall toxicity in the game. That kind of stands to reason, don't you think? I mean, players who have worked their way up to the top tier only to roll out with mindless robots who don't know their AP shells from their elbow is rather annoying to say the least and it's always going to prompt some kind of harsh words from others although to be honest with you some of the toxicity out there is a little bit too harsh to be fair i mean i was in a game the other day and people and some player told me to go and buy a gun put it to my head and paint the walls with a funny color actually he didn't direct it at me directed it at somebody else he directed it at my tune mate who, who are actually playing really well so I sometimes I just don't understand the toxicity in the game anyway but the thing is you know rolling out with mindless robots on occasion is really going to annoy people and it does and that's why you see that toxicity because when you roll out in tier 10 as I said you are expecting at least some basic understanding, some basic knowledge and some basic skills being brought into play. And when all that gets thrown out the window and there appears to be no skill, no understanding, no common sense, then it's going to ruffle the players' feathers. Simple as that. Now, if you drop down a few tiers, it's actually pretty difficult to get upset with those kind of players. I mean... 
at the end of the day, you expect it because they're still learning the game. Drop down to tier six, for example, you're not expecting players to be like super duper fantastic. You're not expecting players to be, you know, super duper unicorns who know every trick in the book. You're expecting players to be learning the ropes, to be learning the basics, learning how to side scrape, to an extent, learning how to drive. So you can get away with, you know, bad teams down there because you expect that lackluster gameplay. It's a fair thing, to be honest with you. But the thing is, when you then get into tier 10, you expect a different level of gameplay, at least while I do. I don't expect to be, you know, faced with teams over completely clueless. Now take this game here, this tier 10 game, as a case in point of what I mean about the terrible gameplay in tier 10. Now we're rolling out on Castilla, okay? It's, we got, we got two tier nines in either team, but the majority of the tanks are tier 10. And I always try to sort of work my way around this corner to see if I can spot anything. And guess what? I spot everything, literally. I mean, why is there a T-57 Heavy there? I, I get the Yeageru, I get the object, but there's a T-57 Heavy there. Why? Why is there a T-57 camping in the spawn? I mean, where does, I mean, look, this game totally threw me, if I'm being honest. I have seen some weird and wonderful ways to play this game, but I've never really experienced an entire team, save one, the Progetto, camping in the spawn for the entire game, just inviting the enemy to come and smack them. Where does that tactic come from? Now, I remember back in the day, oh look, there's a T-92 there as well. That's a light tank, what is it doing there? But anyway, as I was say, I remember back in the day when you roll out in tiers one, two, and three, players would all camp together in a corner, you know, big cluster of players, not really knowing what to do or how to do it, which is perfectly understandable in tiers one, two, and three. They're new players, new to the game. They have no idea of tactics, maps, or even how to drive the tanks. But tier 10, I mean, really? Players in tier 10 are that bad that they act like tier 1 lemmings huddled together in a corner to see what happens next? I mean, who is to blame for this or what is to blame for this? Well, to be honest with you, it's a multitude of things really. Obviously, the main blame rests on the very large shoulders of wargaming. After all, they introduce so many easy ways to bypass the grind and to get your grubby little paws onto a shiny new tier 10 tank. Be that with boosters, certificates, pay to progress, instant upgrades, even bots inflating your win rate to give you some kind of sense of a false sense of security of your own worth. And don't even get me started on rankings, you know, seeing people with rankings of you know, 30 and being completely clueless. Doesn't matter what you want to throw into the mix, wargaming carry the shoulder of blame. We YouTubers also need to shoulder some of that blame. I mean, how many YouTube videos do you see from the main guys showing anything less than a tier 8? Unless they're talking about how broken or OP the Smasher is. I looked myself earlier, and some of the big names out there don't even venture down that far, as if to do so will somehow ruin their reputation or something. Now, obviously, most YouTubers do content for the revenue, and as such, they need views. And in fairness, not many players are interested in seeing a tier six gameplay, whereby there's no fun in watching a tier six tank dish out 1.5K for a golden M, when you can watch a tier 10 dish out 10K for the same golden M. Finally, we have the players themselves. These are the players who rush through those tiers without care in the world. They don't give a damn about the other players out there. And they all, you also have the right to enjoy the game. The thing is, I can't overly blame the players. After all, if you give a player an inch, they will take a country mile. I mean, who wouldn't? Stands to reason, doesn't it? Now, okay, I've heard many of you say that this issue has come about because of the recent migration between the former CIS server and the EU server. And that could be a valid argument. However, I've done videos on this topic before. So I, for one, am not buying that it's all down to the recent migration. That's absolute nonsense, in my opinion. I say it's a valid argument because the player base on EU has increased. And with the increase in the player base, the chances of you coming across poor players also increases. 
Now, let's look at this logically. Back in before the migration, there were approximately 12,000 players on the EU server, approximately. Now, 60% of those 12,000 were below 50%. That makes approximately 7,000 players. We now, since the migration, have approximately 35,000 players on the EU server. The 60% below 50% remains the same, but we jump from 7,000 to 21,000. So the chances of you coming across the bad players greatly increases. The chances of you coming across good players also greatly increase. That's what happened when the player base increases. That's just logic, simple as that. The thing is, what can be done about this? Well, that's the $64,000 question, really. I mean, the players' attitudes and the warg and the YouTubers are unlikely to change anytime soon. Let's be honest here. So the change can only come from wargaming, and it must be driven by wargaming at the end of the day. Wargaming must find an effective way to limit this fast-track progress players now have. Something which this new MM, to an extent, was meant to achieve. But clearly, this new MM is not doing what it stated it was going to do on the tin. Simple as that. So Wargaming really does really need to go back, revisit this new MM, and make some real tangible changes in order to help the entire player base. New, less skilled players and older, more skilled players alike. Will that happen? Ha! <laughs> Difficult to say. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But until something is done, we all need to grin and bear it to an extent, as we say in England. All we as players can do is roll out and try our very best. And my advice to those players who want a sub 45% win rate, guys, you can't be having fun if you are rolling out and losing six out of every 10 games. That can't be any fun at all. So do yourself a favour, stop rolling out in tricky tanks in tier 10. Yeah, it may give you some fun, but what's the point? I mean, it's not fun. You, you can't, I, I, I'm sorry, losing six out of every 10 battles, I can't believe that's fun. It's a competitive game, the idea of the game is to win, and if you're losing constantly, it's not fun, is it? So do yourself a favour. Drop down a few tiers, learn the basics. However, I have to admit, dropping down to tier six or tier seven sometimes is not fun either. I mean, where's the fun in being smashed by a smasher or an annihilator? Not much fun, let's be honest. However, they're not found in every single battle, so there is some positivity there to an extent, albeit slightly. Anyhow, I am still gonna venture out in tier 10, although with a slight amount of dread. Wondering what type of team I will both face and I will be placed into. Because look, whilst it's no fun losing, it's also no fun smacking the bejesus and farming the heck out of a clueless enemy team. I mean, that's about as much fun as watching Barcelona Football Club play the local pub team. Yeah, it's exciting for a short time watching Barcelona not 20 goals past the amateurs from the local pub team who've, you know, who've got bigger beer guts than me. But after a while, it becomes boring, repetitive, and it leaves you wondering, why did you bother in the first place to watch? And that's how blitz will get. You will wonder, why are you bothering to log on? Why are you bothering to roll out in the top tier when, you know, you're, you're smacking the heck out of people who have clearly no clue? Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my take on kind of the new MM, but more is asking the question, is tier 10 broken? You let me know. That's what the comments are there for, guys. Comment in everything below. And until the next time, remember, look, stay safe out there. Try to have fun on the battlefield and try to have some happy tanking because that really is what it's all about, yeah? It's having fun and being happy.